You're watching an interview with Dr. Colleen Shogan, 11th Archivist of the United States for National Archives News, part of the National Archives and Records Administration. This interview was recorded on May 23, 2023 at the National Archives Building in Washington, D.C. Dr. Shogan, welcome. This is our first time talking for National Archives News. Uh, this is your first week here. Tell us about what the last week has been like for you as head of the National Archives. Well, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, it's been a very exciting time, and I've been waiting a long time for this. I've really enjoyed being able to visit many of the staff who work here at A1 and also had the opportunity to visit Archives 2 in College Park uh, as well. You were able to actually see some records and some documents in the last week, including General Order Number mm -hmm. 3, which is, is really a treasure here. Um, what, what's it been like to see those records up close firsthand? It's, I mean, it does give you chills down your spine. I wasn't even expecting to see General Order Number 3 when I walked into that room. So that was a very welcome surprise, considering that we are entering into civic season very soon with Juneteenth and then, of course, Fourth of July. What are you most looking forward to as Archivist of the United States? I really am looking forward to learning. The archives is a complex place, so there's a, a lot of a diversity of programs, diversity of people who work at the archives. And what I'm looking forward to most is being able to, of course, get to know the people who work here in the Washington, D.C. area, but also to travel to the 40-some other locations around the United States that also uh, house and preserve federal records. Are you planning to visit every facility? I will visit every facility, and we will uh, try to group those in a way that makes sense so that I can visit more than, in many trips, I'll be able to visit more than one facility in, in, in a given trip. But we'll try to do this uh, as efficiently and economically as possible. Your first one up is NPRC, the National Personnel Records. It's first Center. visit outside of Washington, D.C., outside of uh, Archives 1 or Archives 2 will be to the NPRC in St. Louis, and then also to the civilian records in Valmire. There is a lot going on down there. Yes, there is. And that's, if you watched any of my confirmation hearing or uh, any of uh, the interaction that I had with um, the Homeland Security uh, and Government Affairs Committee that considered my nomination, I said this in both of my hearings, that that would be my top priority, top discrete priority. There's larger priorities, uh, and, and but I view veterans' records that is a critical part of access, right? That's, that's an important part of uh, keeping that strategic focus. And um, due to you know, really no fault of anyone, there is a backlog of those uh, records requests uh, due to the pandemic. And we're figuring out ways in which we can reduce that backlog and eliminate that backlog as quickly as possible so that we can serve our veterans community and they can have access to their full service record if they need it. You've said that you were going to be in sort of listening and learning mode these first few months, I guess. What does that mean for you? What is this listening and learning mode to start off with? It's uh, like I said, this place is a very complex place. So it's not just that there's one or two different, you know, discrete functions at the National Archives. There's many functions. So uh, when I say listening and learning, I do mean that uh, to understand what a uh, variety of, of divisions and programs do, what their mission is. And then also hearing uh, from staff, what are the problems? What are the things that you're worried about or concerned about? And trying to chronicle those for myself, keep track of them, and figure out ways in which we're able to uh, make things better, not for our staff, uh, of course, but also for American citizens and the customers that come here to view the records and engage with the archives. This has definitely been, for the National Archives, a very high profile few years. Um, is there an opportunity in that mm -hmm. to engage more with the public, um, to perhaps engage more with uh, communities that we have not engaged sufficiently with before? I think there is. I think that, yes, it's been a, a, a extraordinary 12 months to, to 24 months for the National Archives. Uh, so it, it's been unprecedented in that way. If you had you know, maybe walked out into the street and asked anybody, you know, over a year ago, do you know what the National Archives was? They may, if they saw National Treasure, they may, oh, is that the place where the declaration is? They may know that. Uh, now I think you would go out and, and ask, uh, ask people, and particularly people who 
watch the news or view the news on some regular basis, they will have an idea of the role of the National Archives and, and, and what it does. It may not be a full role, a fully accurate depiction of what uh, NARA does, but at least we're, we're on people's radars. And I think with that, uh, it poses a lot of opportunities. So we want people that are curious about us, uh, that want to learn more, go to the website. Of course, that's how people are going to, going to across the United States mostly engage with us. And we want them to learn more uh, about how the agency works, of course, but also to engage with the records and particularly the records we have online. So we should always be trying to figure out how are we going to convert people who are curious about the archives or even our visitors that come here to Washington, D.C. to view the founding documents, how we can we convert those individuals into users? And we have to really think about that. If people of casual interest who hear the archives in the news, want to make them users, but also the people, once again, who physically visit us in D.C. or any of the other installations across the United States, a presidential library, for example. How can we convert them into a, a user that is able to really engage with our records for a lifetime? When you spoke to staff for the first time last week um, during our all-hands meeting, you, you made a comment about uh, kind of the, the, the personal aspect of finding you know per personal records within the national archive system and then just the bigger um the bigger picture you know pulling these massive you know we have founding documents we have we have so many of the crucial documents and records of the country can you speak more to that i guess I don't, the versatility of the national archives for the public right we have to meet people where they are where they, they want to come and interact with us there will be people that will be, you know, aficionados and, and lovers of American history, and they will want to see the most important documents, like I was able to see, uh, that that leads to the creation, uh, commemorates Juneteenth, leads to the cons uh, the creation uh, eventually of a, of a federal holiday to commemorate that moment. So there will be people that will be very appreciative of that, but there will also be people who are looking at immigration records, that are looking at census records who are looking for uh, uh, their veterans' records or maybe their, their parents' or their siblings' veterans' records. And so very individual type of experiences and, and either seeing those for meaningful reasons or seeing them for reasons because they need those records to establish criteria for, for benefits um, or other things that the federal government really does owe them uh, in, in a fair manner. And so we have, to, we have to realize that people are coming from all kinds of different perspectives, and we have to be able to, once again, serve people for the reason and, and that they are coming to the National Archives. That also means serving communities that have maybe traditionally used the National Archives previously, and that will determine strategically, and I know this work is already uh, uh, being done here at the National Archives, but thinking about what records we choose to digitize and make available online and in the catalog uh, records that, for example, uh, the Alaska Native records. And that's really critically important because otherwise, how are people going to be able to access those records? There's real barriers there. Um, and so when we ask, why, why aren't all Americans using the National Archives? It's because of those barriers. And so we have to figure out where those barriers are and how can we eliminate, eliminate them. And, you know, once again, uh, throwing the treasure chest open to everyone also means keeping that in mind when we decide strategically where to put resources for things like digitization. When you think forward, you know, you've been in this position for not even a week yet, but when you think forward to what you want your legacy to be as the 11th archivist of the United States, the first woman who's held this position permanently, what do you see as your, what you'd like your legacy to be here? One word I, I really keep in, in my head, which is access. And I, and I mean access in all the ways that we've talked about in this interview. Access uh, for people who are, who are curious, who want to learn more. Access for people who need the records for a particular reason. Um, access for people that maybe uh, haven't find interacting with a government agency or a government institution intimidating. I mean, this is a beautiful building. Uh, but it is also an intimidating building when you when you walk up and, and you know and the way designed and and how it is. So it can be intimidating for some people. So we have to figure out ways in which we make sure that all Americans feel welcome at the National Archives and they're able to go on their own journey and facilitate it. So that's really the word 
um, that I keep in my head. And uh, it means a lot of different things. It doesn't just mean one thing. Uh, but we are here to preserve those records, but we are also here to share them. Uh, and, and, and to me, uh, that's very, very important. We have to keep both of those elements uh, really at the foremost of our minds as we're doing our work.